Here at the Epic Homestead, we have a new structure on the property. And I could not be more excited. It is a six foot by 18 foot custom chicken coop built by Carolina Coops. But I don't have any chickens in it. And you know why? It's because I don't have a lot of chicken knowledge. I'm a gardener, guys. So what I did is not only do I have the coop, but I called Matt, who is the owner and inventor of this Carolina coop, to come on out here, sit down in the Epic Garden, and answer 20 plus of your questions on exactly how this coop was built and how coops should be built in general, and also questions that any beginner chicken keeper needs to know about keeping chickens. So how'd you get to a point in your life where you build custom chicken coops for a living? I, I tell you, it all happened on accident. It started out of survival in 08 when the recession hit. I was pulling wood out of a dumpster to build things to sell them. And along with that, it was the same time I bought my first house in the city of Durham. Wanted chickens, got chickens, built a little coop. Chicken math kicked in, wanted a bigger coop, so I sold my little coop. Sold in 20 minutes for 200 bucks, which back then was like winning the lotto for me. I was able to buy some food for my family. And really the rest is history. When we're talking about a chicken coop in a suburban backyard, like the one behind you, where do you place it? Or where do you think about placing a chicken coop? Is there an optimal location? You know, there really is. But first I wanna say with our coop design, it, it can go anywhere. But I always like to tell people, if you have a spot where you can put your coop in the woods, that's ideal for the chickens. They're already a woodland animal, give them that shade. But the other thing we've realized when we do a lot of site surveys is a lot of times there's a spot that is not being used that can be perfect for a chicken coop. Can you mix chickens and quail in the same coop? No, because quail require either a very low structure so that they can't fly up and uh, break their necks or it has to be very tall and grassy in the bottom. Quail and chickens just do not belong together. Is there anything you can put in besides chickens in a chicken coop together with chickens? Oh yeah, we've done ducks, turkeys, uh, rabbits, and I'm sure there's a couple other things I'm not thinking of, but yeah. Question about frostbite on combs. Oh yeah. yeah. How, how do you deal with that? If you live in an area that you have high potential for frostbite, get chickens that don't have large combs. Here's what I see happen. People insulate their hen house, and when they insulate their hen house, they're also heating it up. And when you insulate something, you're trapping moisture. So that's all fine and dandy until morning comes and the chickens want to go outside and be chickens. And now they have all this moisture on their comb. And then when they go down into the run where it's cold, that's where you increase the chances of frostbite. What's your favorite bedding type if you're using the deep litter method? Industrial hemp. Industrial hemp is pH neutral. It just does a much better job at the composting process. It really allows a set it, forget it system. How about this? Does deep litter work in a climate that will freeze? Absolutely. So I'm getting a question that it's six, eight, 10 inches deep and part of it's frozen. Is that a problem or no? It really shouldn't be frozen because there's not a lot of moisture in it. Um, but even if it did freeze a little, that is not a problem at all. How do you handle a broody hen? You don't, she won't let you. He here's the thing, people frown upon broodiness. And my opinion is let them be broody, let them be mothers, even give them some eggs to sit on and just let them go through their cycle. People don't like when they go broody because they're not producing eggs. But in my opinion, that's the time to let her be a mother, give her some fertile eggs, or after 21 days, go out there at night, put baby chicks underneath her and let her raise those baby chicks. What is the best material for the coop and for the run if they're different? Okay, well, when it comes to materials for a chicken coop, you know, to me, the sweet spot is building everything out of lumber. We love dug fur. When it comes to the roofing, metal is where it's at. Metal reflects the heat. It's also very safe to collect the rainwater. And when it comes to the screen, we love the galvanized core, black PVC coated. When it comes to your fastening hardware, you want to make sure it's stainless steel or blue coat, especially in the areas where you're using pressure treated lumber. You don't want those chemicals in the pressure treated lumber to corrode those fasteners. What is the most quiet chicken breed if you're trying to keep these chickens on the down low? I tell you, the thing about chickens is I know you can read magazines and they'll tell you about, you know, the buffs are usually friendly and other chickens are going to be a little bit more flighty. You, I don't think you can really pick a breed that's going to be quiet, uh, especially when they have their egg song. How much space does a chicken need not just to live, but to thrive? An individual chicken. That's a great question. That's a great way of putting it because something I talk about all the time is space. When the chickens are out of their hen house during the daytime, I, give them as much room as possible. The bare minimum is 10 square feet per hen, but I don't like that. I say give them as much room as possible and make sure that they're able to get to areas where they can scratch and be chickens and eat bugs and things like that. And also be able to run underneath 
trees to hide from predators. Can you just have a few chickens in your backyard, no coop, just let them hang out in the backyard? Oh yeah. And is there any tip that would make that easier, I guess? I guess what to make that easier would be just to make sure that they have easy access to food and water. Uh, chickens are gonna go where they wanna go. What about protection since you've got no hen house? Well, there's gonna be no protection. Yeah. They're at high risk. They're gonna go do what chickens did before coops were invented. They will go up in your trees and- Try to live? Try, they, they will try to live. What diseases are the most common that you're gonna deal with when you've got some chickens? Yeah, Marix is very common. That's a nightmare. Your first year of raising hens, coccidosis is very popular, very common, uh, especially if you have warm, wet soil. And that's what will allow that parasite to thrive. Do breeds produce more eggs and less eggs? And if so, which breeds produce the most? So there are breeds designed for just pumping out eggs. Uh, the Rhode Island Red is one of the most popular chicken breeds in the backyard hobby because they are such good egg producers. And there's gonna be some breeds out there that aren't gonna lay as much, but I also wanna say a lot of the egg production has to do with their environment and also will have a lot to do with their age. Can chickens and dogs, if I have a pet dog, is that gonna be a problem or can they play nicely together? It depends on the dog. It depends on the dog. There are many times you can have a dog and chicken get along, if not have that dog protecting that flock. But you gotta remember, we bred a lot of dogs that their instincts are to go chase that fast moving bird, in this case, a chicken. As far as kitchen scraps, are there any unconventional things you can feed your chickens and also what should you really avoid feeding them? There's a lot of people that say, don't give them citrus, don't give them apples, you know. Bottom line is this, chickens, you can give chickens anything in my opinion. What you don't do is give them something that's moldy. Chickens are, the toxicity in the mold will kill the chickens. You can just use common sense. What paint or stains are safe to use inside the coop if you do wanna paint the inside? So when it comes to paints and stains inside the hen house, I, they're all safe in my opinion, especially once they cure properly. What people think is that chickens are gonna go eat the paint, they're gonna go eat the stain, they're not. They might peck at it a couple times, but they're not trying to eat it. That is their way of smelling, that's their way of going around and checking things out. As far as the basic daily chores required to keep, keep your chickens in good health, keep them happy, keep them laying, what are you looking at as far as the chores themselves and how much time that takes? So every day, if you got the right setup, it's seconds. You just go out and collect the eggs, make sure you do a once over on their feed, all right, and then especially with our water system that's 50 gallons, you just make sure there's no leaks anywhere, which again, takes seconds. One of the things we love about a backyard chicken is that what it does to that yolk, that mm. orange yolk. What if I'm having backyard chickens and I'm just not getting that orange yolk? What's going wrong? The food, mix up the food. If you're feeding your chickens just straight egg layer mash and no other variety, and they're not able to get to any bugs and things like that, that's what happens in factory farming. And that's why the eggs don't taste so good. Mix it up. How do I keep, I guess, raccoons and snakes out of a coop if it's different? Okay, so raccoons and snakes are completely two different animals. To keep raccoons out has a lot to do with the quality of your construction, understand how raccoons think. Remember that they have pinkies and thumbs, so you gotta make sure they can't work certain locking mechanisms. That's why we love carabiners on all our locks. Um, but when it comes to snakes, here's what you have to understand. Snakes that are big enough to eat the eggs it, like a coop like ours, they can't fit through, but you gotta think like a snake. You gotta get down to their level, and that if you don't have the bottom of your coop prepped out right and a snake can get through, they're gonna go in and most likely they can find the eggs. However, a lot of people don't realize this. You can have a juvenile snake make their way into our run and go right through the half inch by half inch hardware cloth. When that happens, I'm thankful because that's free chicken food. Mm, they won't be able to attack the chicken too small so the chicken just pick it apart. No, they, they don't do that. Well, I, I, okay, if a venomous snake went in there, a constricted style snake, it would have to be a baby chick, but the mama hen is gonna protect that baby chick. Do I need to add a fan to keep airflow in the coop or is there a better method? The better method is using physics, okay? When air comes into a building, it will warm up, but it needs to convect. We all have learned hot air rises and that allows it to escape. That's all you need, that is ventilation. How do I easily clean a coop if it's raised up off the ground, much like the one that we've got at Carolina Coops? Well, if you have one like ours, I always emphasize that you're using a pulling sweeping motion, a hack I'll never forget years ago. A lady had what I call a rock rake, which has those very hard fingers, and she took some hardware cloth, it was like quarter inch by quarter inch hardware cloth, and she wrapped the fingers so that it could grab more of the smaller particulates of the litter, and it's just a pulling sweeping motion, like a hoe would be. 
Do you have to ever maintain or replace your coupe screens? No. 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 I wouldn't use it if I had to. <laughs> How much does it cost to keep chickens per month? Let's say you got 10 chickens. What's a ballpark on that all-in cost? Gosh, you know, and that's a tough one too because the price of feed has changed. You know, I I'm fortunate. I don't ever look at numbers like that, but I can imagine that's a, it's a good question. And I think the last time I bought a bag of feed was like 15 bucks. And if it was like 10 chickens, you're probably gonna go through, gosh, maybe three to four bags. So maybe 60, 80 bucks a month, if that. But here's the beauty of giving them table scraps or letting them free range. That minimizes how much feed they gotta eat. Can you get it to a point, like say here in my garden, where if I let them free range, my feed cost could be potentially zero, or is it not enough food for them to scavenge around? Well, you have enough food here. Obviously, you don't want them eating you know, our Cabbage Patch Kids here and whatnot, but uh, it is absolutely possible. There's a lot of people that can raise their chickens just on their compost. And you gotta remember, they're not just eating the table scraps or whatever you're putting in the compost. Think about all the other bugs that are in there that they're gonna eat. What are, and this is a great one, what are the most unique, delicate, or intricate features that you're putting in your coops at Carolina? There's so many features with our Carolina coop. And, you know, the number one is the deep litter system. It's amazing to not only be able to go over a year without having to clean out your hen house, it's also healthier for your chickens. And there's so many details on how we accomplish that using the food safe, high density polyethylene, um, all the way down to, you know, our automatic door that we use to let the chickens free range, the rope wrap roost bars, things like that. The, the heated water system. If you've got four chickens, you want to add two more how do you safely introduce new birds into your flock or, or can you really? No, so you can absolutely introduce new hens to your existing flock safely. Rule number one, it's not the age, it's the size. Make sure they're the same size. And the more space you give them, the better chance you have of decreasing them from wanting to fight each other. The best way is when a hen goes broody, let her hatch those baby chicks and they are automatically part of the pecking order. And you were saying that you've seen people put in eggs that of course aren't the mothers you've seen them put in just baby chicks and swap out a fake egg you've yep. seen them put in baby I mean, turkeys baby ducks yeah i just the other day i saw two kittens under a hen <laughs> you know it's crazy final question oddball question do you know if the chicken breed affects the flavor of the egg do i know no i don't know that but i would highly doubt it i think the flavor of the ch the egg has everything to do with what they're eating there's some people that say if you give your chickens a lot of onions and garlic you'll taste that in the eggs matt tell us a little bit about the philosophy of carolina coops and how people can get in touch with you guys of course and you know why go carolina instead of a diy or instead of something else out there well th okay so the reason why i tell people if you're thinking about getting the backyard chickens, you should buy from us is because two things, we're chicken people and we're woodworkers. We combine those two perfectly and that's why our coops are awesome. Also, our customer service is phenomenal. We are available 24 seven. You won't believe the things we do to make people happy. We actually hire people, this is gonna sound crazy, we hire people, or most people from the food industry. People that are in the food industry, they know service and they just, that stays with them in the customer service side of things. And then of course, when people need to get a hold of us, there's so many different ways. You can call us, email us. We have a, a chat service, but my favorite is just give us a call. And there you have it, a font of wisdom, Matt from Carolina Coops. I'm taking that wisdom into my chickens, which will be coming soon here at the Epic Homestead. So stay tuned, good luck in the garden, and keep on growing.